Morpheus version 5.5.2 introduces a number of changes related to role-based access control. These include changes to the roles UI itself, new permissions added and changes to existing permissions, as well as new role-related features. Today we're going to take a look at all of the new additions here in Morpheus 5.5.2. So first, let's talk about the roles UI and changes related to that. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice, you can see here that I'm on a role, de uh, role detail page. First thing you're going to notice is that categories have been added to the feature permissions tab. In the past, this has been a long list of all of the feature permissions that were uh, available for administrators to set on their roles. But now this includes just a list of categories. These categories can be expanded. Um, are closed to make it a little bit easier to manage if you're just looking at a certain subset of categories uh, or a certain subset of feature permissions. We also have a button here we can expand all and collapse all to uh, make it easier to open them all up or close them all down depending on what you need to do. Another addition is a default feature level for each category. So you can see if I close the admin category here again, we have this drop down on each of the categories and that allows us to set a default level. So if I open up the admin uh, pane, maybe I need none to be the default posture for this particular role. I can set none and Morpheus is automatically going to give me the none access level on all of these, at which time I can then go in and tweak individual feature permissions if any of those should be set to something above my default level. Set that back to full, and then I can close that category back down. Additionally, we've added this search box, so you can type in a search string. Let's say I'm looking for feature permissions that are related to instances. I type in instances, and Morpheus is going to give me back all of the uh, feature permissions that match my search string. So in this particular case, all of the feature permissions that match the search string instances are all under the provisioning category, which is why I only have one category returned here. And Morpheus is going to list out all of those, and I can much more easily find the one that I need. In addition to that, we also have some changes on some of the other tabs, some UI changes on some of the other tabs uh, beyond just features. If we take a look at the Groups tab, I can show you what I mean there. We have, uh, just like with features, we now have a default access dropdown that we can use for each of these tabs. Um, and if I look at more than one, you can see that this UI is very similar across all of these tabs. But go back, going back to groups just to illustrate the point, we can once again set a default access that can be none, read, or full depending on what, uh, for this particular role group, depending on what I want to set as the uh, default access level. Let's say that I want full access to be the default because I'm going to give this group ac uh, this uh, role access to most of my groups. So I can set full, and then over here, I can set um, all of these to default very quickly by clicking the Update All dropdown and updating them all to default um, as they already were. So just like in features, I now have automatically set my default posture for all of the groups, and I can go in and update some of those individually if needed. And in that way, I can very easily uh, set this role's access to groups, set this role's access to instance types, to blueprints, whatever it may be that I need. Go ahead and set that back to default before I uh, jump back over into the feature permissions. So going back to the Features tab on the Role Detail page, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that 5.5.2 introduces new permissions as well as changes to existing permissions. So let's talk about that. In past versions of Morpheus, we've had a much broader feature permission labeled Provisioning Instances. And this not only controlled access to being able to list out instances, but it also uh, encompassed the ability to provision instances, as well as to view them once they were provisioned and then do lots of things underneath of an existing instance, such as cloning or editing or locking and unlocking or scaling and all kinds of things like that. So it's a very broad permission. In 5.5.2, we have completely gotten rid of the provisioning instances role permission and have broken those down into much more granular permissions, most of which you can see on the screen here. 
I won't go into too much detail about what each of them does exactly, but let me go ahead and list them out for you. Most of them are here. Uh, I can see just from doing this uh, search. We've added instances add, instances edit, instances list, instances delete, instances lock, unlock, instances scale, and instances settings. Those are all under the provisioning umbrella. And then also under the lifecycle umbrella, which you don't see here because I'm filtered on the word instances, but under the lifecycle umbrella, you have power control, that's been added. And then also under lifecycle, we have environment variables, that's been added as well. So all of those feature permissions have been added and most of them were in some way encompassed under the old provisioning instances permission, which is no longer available. As I said a second ago, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on exactly what each of those feature permissions does. If you wanna know more about those, you can go to 5.5.2 version, as you can see down here, of Morpheus documentation, and that includes this complete table, which has a listing of all of the feature permissions, as well as a description of what they do or what they, uh, the various uh, permission option levels. Um, allow you to do. So you can look a little bit uh, more into that in documentation if you want. And we've also added this little description in line with each of the uh, permissions in 5.5.2 as well. So those can make it a little bit easier to know exactly what you're controlling with each one. In addition to uh, making uh, provisioning instances permissions much more granular. We've also added a user level permission to a lot of feature access permissions which lacked it in the past. So one we can take a look at uh, as an example is, uh, actually let's just look for execute because um, uh, I think all three of these have had this change made. Um, but in addition to full and none, we've also added user level permission to execute script execute task and execute workflow. And what that does is it simply allows this permission to be done on instances which are owned by the currently logged in user. So you no longer have to either give complete access to executing scripts, tasks, or workflows to all instances. You can now limit a role to only being able to run them against instances that that currently logged in user owns. For the last part of the video, I'm gonna move out to the primary tenant for this appliance. In the earlier part of the demo, I was working in one of the subtenants. We're still in the same appliance, but I've moved out to the primary tenant, and you can see that this tenant happens to have a different theme applied, a dark theme. But in any case, um, we're gonna take a look at a new roles-related feature that's been added in Morpheus 5.5.2. Now, in Morpheus, we have user roles that are associated with each tenant. So the primary tenant can have its own set of user roles and each subtenant can have its own set of user roles. And in the past, the only way for primary tenant administrators to adjust role permissions within the subtenant if they ever needed to was to impersonate a user in that subtenant and then go in and edit the roles that way. Well, Morpheus 5.5.2 has added the ability to edit role permissions from within the primary tenant, but for roles that are associated with one of the subtenants. So you can see I've clicked on the tenant detail page. This is actually for the same tenant that we were just working in previously. Um, and in 5.5.2, I now have this new roles tab. So if I click on roles, this is gonna give me a list of the roles that are in this tenant. So these are not the primary tenant's roles, these are the subtenants roles. And if I click on one of the roles, can pick any one here, it's gonna load up and we're gonna see the exact same UI that we just walked through previously as I was showing you some of the new UI changes that have come with 5.5.2. We're gonna see the exact same UI, but now I'm actually able to edit the role permissions for this particular role, which exists in that subtenant and um, in that way, primary tenant administrators can have a greater control over feature permissions for users within a subtenant if they ever need to without having to jump through the extra hoop of impersonating a user within that tenant. Um, and it can take out the step of creating additional users in the subtenant for your primary tenant administrators. That would no longer be needed unless there were other things that they needed to impersonate for. So. This is a very handy feature that allows primary tenant administrators to do some additional things in the subtenant without jumping through some extra hoops.